Uh, I'm Joe Riggs. Um, I've had over 100 MMA fights. I've had a crazy career in and outside of the ring, and I'm here to share my life story with you. It's the guy that I think is the best in the world at ground and pound. This guy drops sick bombs. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I was born to my father, Andy Riggs, and my mother, Sue Riggs, now DeSalle. I have, uh, I have two older brothers. I'm the youngest of three. I have an older brother named Andy and an older brother named Jason. And we're separated from about eight years. So my older brother's like eight years older than me. My, other, my middle brother is like three years older than me. Well, you, believe it or not, you know, when my parents were, were married, they got divorced when I was 10. But before then, I was a mama's boy, you know, I just, because I was the youngest, my mom, I guess, coddled me. There was always rough housing in the family. I didn't really like that. I, you know, I, I, I liked the security of my mother. So um, they get a divorce. I, just, I wake up from school one day, and um, I remember there's lipstick written on the mirror <clears throat> to my father. And my mom's out there usually getting me ready for school. And then, so that was weird. My brothers were acting weird. I was too young to really understand that you know, the magnitude of what have happened. And then <clears throat> my dad comes home from work, kind of, kind of, <clears throat> kind of tells, te you know, lets us know what's going on. I don't really understand. Then my mom comes home shortly after that. And I just wanted to go with her, you know, I wanted to go with her. With her. And the last thing I wanted to go to, go to school, I didn't want to go to school. Because I'm an emotional person, you know, I mean, I have, I don't, I have, even as a grown man, I don't have a problem showing my emotions. and. So going to school, I was a basket case, you know, and there was a, the, the teacher who actually, uh, who I ended up, um, ended up, she ended up, she was my fifth grade teacher, and I ended up uh, knowing her, like, the, like, we went to the same church in Phoenix, like, the last few years before I left, and she, uh, she saw I wasn't doing good in class and took me to the library and spent the whole day talking with me, which is, was a nice escape because I couldn't have sat there through the whole class. I was already, you know, trying not to cry in front of everybody. So, you know, things went drastically downhill from there. Like, you know, I, my dad always, my dad was, he was a diesel mechanic his whole, his whole life and worked a lot. So I didn't really know my father. You know, he would, he would work at least 100 hours a week. And, um, you know, we had a nice house, I had nice clothes. And, you know, so then my mom left and she just fucking, boom, gone. You know, it wasn't like, you know, she was fighting for custody or coming back and see us. She came back and saw me that morning. After that, I didn't see my mom for five years. And uh, and then my brothers were old enough to where they had friends, and I didn't have any friends. I was kind of picked on. And um, I didn't, uh, you know, so I had no outlet. My dad still was working like he normally did. He poured himself into his work even more so from going to 100 hours a week to 150 hours a week, you know, because, I mean, maybe not working the whole time, but he was gone, you know, he was, He'd be, you know, three hours away in, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a copper mine working on the dump trucks, and then so um, I was at home by myself, which I still to this day I hate being by myself, you know. So I was alone, and you know, my dad would because my mom would take care of all the bills. That he would forget to go grocery shopping, and you know, over, in the next few months he would forget to buy me clothes. He forget to give me lunch money. He forget to pay the electric bill. So I remember for a week straight, and then it was crazy. Like, in two weeks, it, like, the house went from being nice to in shambles, because three boys, I mean, like, my wife's a clean freak, so it was weird to get used to, because I got used to being in that life, but just, I remember, for two weeks, I remember, I come home from school, which I used to be deathly afraid of coming home by myself, because I hated the dark or be alone. I remember I would, if my mom wasn't there, I'd like, throw my backpack in and wait on the, the big cable box out in front of my yard if she was gone at the grocery store or something like that. And she'd be back in five minutes. So then I would, I would have to go inside, no TV, no lights. And I, when the, when it got dark, I knew it was time for bed. And then my, like the blankets, like the dog shit on the blankets. And, you know, I remember covering up with a, with a rug and 
you know, I took a bunch of clothes and stuff in a pillow, pillow, pillowcase, and I remember just sleeping in that. And then, I mean, that happened, to, you know, a bunch of times. And I just, I hated being alone. So I knew there was a, a you know, a wrestling program, you know, that was at my school, that was a feeder program towards the high school. And there was a boxing program at the, uh, the YMCA. And um, so I just, one day I went down, as I wanted to do, I wanted to, I mean, because I didn't, I, I didn't, I had no, I, 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 I never, never wanted to do anything like that. It never, never crossed my mind, you know. And like I played football and soccer, you know, but nothing like that. So I, I would walk, I, I walked down to the wrestling, wrestling gym and I saw, you know, first day of wrestling, you know, it's kind of, you know, arbitrary, it's nothing, you know, it's, you don't have like a great practice or anything, it's just, you know, hard, you know, trying to get to know kids that, you know, size you up or have a first, you know, first impression of you, it's not good. And then went to the boxing gym, which where that was, they were used to getting, you know, kind of troubled youth that were, was coming in for different reasons. I didn't have, the one, the wrestling was free, boxing wasn't, but they let me, they let me train there because, you know, I was, I was a natural at doing stuff, so, like they, they had me doing things like knowing now how to coach. I see, you know, what they had me do was just to see if I had natural ability or if I was. Because some people, they're athletes or they're not. So some people take longer to learn. I was easy. I picked up on things quite easily. So they, uh, you know, they took me and spent time with me. And then it was the first time, you know, that I was getting praised for something like that. So I just started boxing and wrestling like that. And then my father or my brothers didn't know for the first two years. Well, because I started wrestling, it was crazy. I started pretty much the same day at both. And then when you wrestle, you start with your right foot, you wrestle with right foot forward, your dominant foot forward, it's called sugar foot. So going into my boxing class, I, because I'm naturally right-handed, but I'm a southpaw. So he, that's the way I stood. And then he was having me throw throw punches and I was naturally turning my hips over and stuff like that. And he and, you know, he wasn't holding pads for young kids, and so he was holding pads for me. So I had my first, my first uh, sparring match. I got in the ring and sparred for the first time within, you know, the first two weeks. And then that was a rush. Well, I, I loved it because, you know, it wasn't like I was angry at somebody. If somebody was angry at me, it was the first time I ever, I saw how, you know, people would hit each other in the face and not be mad. And it was a really good release. I, I was, I mean... It was great, and then and then they they you know praised me, gave me a lot of a lot of positive encouragement, and then kind of took that home and you know gave me gave me strength to get it through the next week. You know, I mean it was it was a, it was an outlet for me that I used that I didn't I didn't want to didn't tell my family because I didn't want them to ruin it. I guess you know I don't I didn't know what they were going to say, and uh, and it was something because I realized that you know it was the first time I, w I was able to self-soothe and self-cope, you know, I mean, it was because my mom was always there for me for that, and then having to do it myself was, was hard, so going to these, these gyms were really helping me, so learning that I, I learned that I could, you know, I, that I was gifted in these areas when I was about 10 years old, and then it was, uh, it was fun, to, it was really, really cool to hear and very, very encouraging. I was, I had been boxing for a little over, a little over a year. And, and, and so I came out and told my, right after this had this little incident happened, I told my family that I was, you know, wrestling and boxing. But my brother, I used to, because I didn't like to be alone, and some days when I couldn't go to the gym, I would give, if my dad would give me lunch money, I'd give it to my brother just so I could hang out with him because I didn't have any friends. And then I would give him money and he would spend it on pot or whatever, and, he, and his friends would just pick on me and just do that, just be me. And then it, I remember it was Christmas, it was cold, and I was I was sitting outside of his friend's house, and they were all like, in the lowest, the youngest person was like 16 to 20, 21, whatever. And then I remember, you know, because I was even though I paid a brother, I was a nuisance, you know. And and that's another thing that I hate being around now. If I feel like I almost over analyze things, like if somebody doesn't want me around, I always even if it's usually it's not true, you know. But but I, I just because of that when I was younger, I kind of still have the you know, issues with that as, an, as a grown man. But, so my brother would, you know, make me feel like a piece of shit, like, why don't you have any friends, yada, 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 but it was better than being home alone. So I was waiting outside my brother's friend's house, they're all, they all inside smoking pot. And then 
they come outside and then everybody's like in an uproar. And I mean, it's like uh, now I know, it, like, you know, when a fight's about to happen, that's the way people act. And my brother comes up to me and he's like, you're gonna fight this guy. And I'm like, what? He's a grown man. He has a beard and I'm a little boy. I'm in, I'm in sixth grade. And uh, I was like, no, no. And then he, he just backs off and, and lets it happen. And I, I walked back, I remember, I, I mean, cause I, I went back to this area later on in life and literally calculate how long I backed up, you know, give or take a couple yards. You know, it was close to a hundred yards, man. It was, I backed up and I, and I was pleading with this guy, no, no. And for the life of me to this day, I don't understand how a grown man would pay somebody in drugs to beat up on a little boy. Like, what the fuck is that guy, I mean, how would that guy, I mean, the guy was a, the guy's a sick motherfucker anyways, you know, looking back on it. But, I mean, I'm crying and there's girls like, stop it, you know, he's, he's, you know, like, you know, they have, they have some sort of conscience, you know, like, unlike anybody else, they're all freaking sociopaths or whatever, I mean, they're, that's, it's not, like, that's not a, if somebody saw that, that's not, somebody that has any kind of, any kind of conscience or heart wouldn't let that happen. And I'm looking at my own brother to help me as I'm backing up and I didn't think it, I've heard, I've ever heard the term, piss your pants because you're scared, and I literally wet myself because I was so afraid. I didn't notice, and I was backing up, and I backed up so far where I stopped into a car, and um, where you get like, your fight or flight syndrome. It's different because I was sparred, and I'd been sparring a lot, and then, but in a, in a in a street, it was different. You know, it's a different feeling. And then I I I was a big kid. I was always a bigger kid. And um, I, I, mean, I hit him with like a one-two, I, hit, I, threw, I, threw a, I threw him with a headlock, and we're pulling his hair. And then I'm just like, I didn't know how to properly punch, but I, but I, 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 from wrestling, I know how to throw a headlock, and I'm sitting through like I'm pinning him, and his head's there, and I'm pulling his hair, and I'm hitting him over and over and over, like just out of pure fear, so he wouldn't hit me. And I'm crying as I'm doing this, and, uh, and, and, I'm a child. And this is a, this is a man. You know, I, I to this day I'm not sure how old he was. I think, I mean, he. I know he was over 18. I mean, he could have been 20. He could have been 22. Who knows? But anyways, they pulled me off him. I mean, I I'm, I peed all of myself, and I don't know if anybody noticed that. I'm crying. Everybody's. I'm getting all these, this positive, you know, this positive praise for, for something that was just traumatic for me, and then. My brother takes me home, tells him what what I did to my dad, tells my dad what I did, and um, my dad thought it was the greatest thing in the world. So you know, as a young age, at a young age, so I, I saw violence. You know, then I got there was a, a positive, you know, positive, you know, positive perspective from my father. That's how I got. I felt the way he showed me love, and it was a, I mean, it was terrible. I wanted to say that, I wanted to tell my dad how awful what he my brother just did to me. You know, I never forgave him. And, and um, but you know, from, from then on, then my brother was asking me how I did certain things, and I told him what I was doing, and then that's when I shortly had my first amateur boxing match, and my dad came, and then, you know, it was it was um, yeah, it was, you know, all downhill from there, uphill from there, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> I'm